Today, Thomas and I are competing in the 7-iron spin challenge. Who can generate the most spin with the 7-iron, and then also who can generate the least amount of spin with the 7-iron. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing in Minnetonka. And today we're going to have a little bit of fun, Thomas. Um, you know, spin is one of those topics in golf that uh, it has a ton of impact on a golf shot. And we're going to, in a way, explain spin, but in a, in a fun way, uh, in a little competition here. So um, we came up with an idea, the 7-iron spin challenge. Uh, first, we're going to try and you know, generate as much spin as possible, and then we're going to kind of flip the script and generate the least amount of spin as possible. But Thomas, explain to me first how important spin is, and then maybe some of the ways, before we start generating a ton of spin, you know, how somebody might be you know, doing that themselves, getting a ton of spin. Yeah, I mean, spin, it's, I mean, it's important. It gives you, gives you stopping power, but mm -hmm. it, it, at times it also can be a hindrance and it can stop the ball going as far. Yeah. So more spin on the golf ball is going to cause the ball to get up in the air and it's going to fly shorter. Yeah. Less spin on the golf ball is going to fly on a lower trajectory and it's going to release out more. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of golfers with a lot of different spin tendencies. I've seen 3,000 RPMs of spin with a 7 iron. Wow. I've seen 9,000 and 10,000 RPMs with a 7 iron. It's a wide range. Yeah. And a lot of it comes to, down to the way they deliver the, the club, yeah. the, how, their, how their swing is, what their face angle is like, what their club path is like, what their tech angle is like, and also where they hit it on the club face. Mm -hmm. But also it's important to pay attention to the type of club that you're using as yeah. well. Loft on the golf club is probably the fastest way as a fitter for us to generate more spin or less spin for a golfer. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the challenge today is for us to, yes, we'll play around, we'll try and play around with our club face, our attack angle, we'll try and swipe across it or mm -hmm. come really far from the inside. But we're also going to have a challenge where we're going to select certain golf clubs on the wall behind us here in the store and use those clubs and explain why we would use those clubs as opposed to certain other golf clubs. Yeah, so I, I think we, I've got my first one here that I don't want to use. This is an I-210 7 iron. Um, it's actually one I have in my bag. And I just, I like the fact that it, there's some weight low, which can launch it in the air and just spin that way. Um, but then, like you said, we'll go to the wall for maybe we need another club as we're hitting the ones that generate a lot of spin where we want another uh, extra degree of loft or something like that. And then vice versa, when we try to decrease that loft and go low, we'll have to go and probably grab a, a stronger lofted club that's going to launch a little bit lower and spin a little bit lower. So uh, this should be a lot of fun, Thomas. Uh, I'm excited to get going. I think we'll have you start and then kind of, you know, as you're hitting, maybe explain what are some of the things you're doing to generate spin and then vice versa and then maybe I can replicate some of those. Yeah, I mean I grabbed my high spinning club off the wall. I grabbed the Titleist 620 forged, it's a muscle back iron, mm -hmm. blade iron. It's got a very, very light golf shaft in it. This is a very unique combo. I'm surprised yeah. that I didn't even see this. So it's got KBS Tour 90 regular golf shaft in it. So it's, it's fairly light but yep. it's also in a blade. So I'm going to expect that it's going to be able to help me generate a little bit more spin mm -hmm. because the loft is weaker, but also the golf shaft is also yeah. pretty, mm -hmm. pretty soft too. Yeah, well, I think I'm ready to get going here, Thomas. We'll see. This will be very interesting. We, have, we don't really know what to expect here. Uh, we're just going to try to generate a bunch of spin, and then uh, and the vice versa, we'll see how low we can go. But uh, I have no idea what to expect. I'm just ready to get started. Let's hit some shots. Okay, so Drew, I'm going to start out, we'll start out with our first golf swing, we'll do our stock swing, so we can okay. get a general idea of what our numbers are and talk yeah. about what, where we're at. So this is, just feeling it in my hands, it's feeling pretty light, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see Different how I deliver the club. Different clubs are used to. Right. All right. So All right. that's kind of a stock swing there. Yeah, I'm usually around about 180 carry with my 7 iron. Who knows, that one went just a little bit, little bit further. This lighter golf shaft was able, able to give me a little bit more club speed. Yep. It's about two miles now faster than I sure. normally swing with my 7 iron. Okay, so now let's kind of get into, you know, these are, we'll take maybe five swings here. We'll generate a lot of spin. So, and I'll kind of have you, you know, walk through a little bit the ways that you are, you know, increasing that spin? Like what are the steps you're going to take? What different things are you going to do with your swing to increase that spin? Yeah. So first thing I'm going to have to change is my club path and my face angle relationship. If I get that ball to curve further to the right, yeah. there's a good chance that ball is going to create more backspin. Yeah. 
um, club path and also attack angle. If you swing your club path further to the left, your attack angle is also going to be a little bit, little bit steeper there okay. too. So I'm, my first attempt here will be a shot where I'll just I'll stand a little bit closer. I'll try and cut across it a little bit and leave the face angle open. Okay. It's funny right. how different it looks like your setup is there. You know, because it's like you're you're angled so far left. You know, but that's the shot that is created. Uh, and you gained you know fourteen fifteen hundred RPM a spin just right. by those kind of small. It seems like smaller tweaks anyway. Yeah. So it's a start. However, um, I'd like to try and get a little bit more yeah. spin because I think you can probably well. And I think that. Th that what you just did. I think a lot of golfers do something similar where they have that steep tech angle. They come out to in, and that's what happens. Um, and that's someone that spins the ball plenty yep. what is is doing that. But then there's maybe uh, you know there's more extremes out there as you've said said that you've seen before. Right. So my next thought would be dynamic loft. Yeah. We're not, when I deliver the club, I really compress the ball. You know, I'm probably about 10 degrees less than what the stated loft on, a, on an iron is. Okay. So this next shot, I'm going to try and feel like I'm kind of hanging back on a little bit. It's going to feel like I'm like this. I'm like flipping at it. <laughs> but because my body turns, is I'll probably, it, it's really hard to have a dynamic yeah. loft higher than the stated loft on a mm -hmm. club. Right. But that's, uh, let's that see if I can do some, that. That's, you could be hurting your wrists if you do that. You right. Know? So for this, I'm going to have to probably feel like I'm kind of hanging back yeah. on it. See, and it's interesting because I think, you know, you, I've seen players do something similar to that, where they're cutting across it and, um, you know, in to out, or out to in swing, excuse me, and they also have that tendency to fall back on their, on their back foot, yeah. and that generates a ton of launch and a ton of spin, as you see here. You went all the way back up, all the way up to 86.54 with that one. Yeah, so we're kind of incrementally seeing, start. you know, how <laughs> these are the different ways players are generating too much spin. It's these steps that you're kind of showcasing here. And again, we're not recommending these as swing tips here. <laughs> these are just kind of things we're showing because I've, I've seen somebody, I see players swing like that all the time. Right, the recommendation would be the, the opposite of what yeah. I just did. We'll notice when I finished that last swing, I really kind you of were, You were back. back, all the weight was on yeah. your right foot, and that is not how it's supposed to be done. And so. then most of the time you want to finish on your, well, if you're a right-handed golfer, finish on your left side. Yeah. If you get a full over, you want to fall this right, way. Right, right. Rather than that way. Yeah. So. Yeah, dynamic loft. I'm going to leave that face angle mm -hmm. open, plus also cutting across it. Yeah. It's going to generate a lot of spin. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good start. Two swings in. Yeah. So now let's take a few swings here, Thomas, for the competition's sake, and see how high of spin you can generate. All right. So my, ne my next thought here is going to be, and I mean, you leave that face angle open. Yeah. Really open. It's, there's a chance that you can generate a lot mm -hmm. of spin. That with a lot of speed, I dare I say it, but if I could almost shank it, yeah, that might generate <laughs> a, a lot more spin there too. So I'm gonna almost intentionally try and shank Or hit this. it off the heel even, just yeah. to kind of. No, just off the heel of the club. Yeah. Like you're talking about hit location. Yeah. I don't ever touch the left hand side. This is gonna be really hard for me. This is gonna be an extreme exaggeration. Yeah. So I'm gonna probably have to feel like I'm literally Standing close. I probably feel like I'm almost <laughs> trying to hit this T when I'm coming down. <laughs> Plus, also doing the yeah. same on the last two swings. We'll see if I can mm -hmm. generate a little bit more. All right. A little more let's see it. Let's get, let's, let's get into the 9,000s here. I definitely would never recommend trying to swing like this. Unless you really maybe have to bend it really Unless far Unless you find yourself in a challenge of spinning a seminar as much as possible. Right. So I'm literally trying to hit that, that T when I'm coming <laughs> through here. Oh, we might have a chance. Oh, that could be good. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Oh, uh, my I, word. I've set the bar. So that's what this, this challenge has become now, is just purposely uh, shaking it. Look, I mean, so I want you to bring those numbers up, because my club speed on those three sw swings were basically the same. We're talking around about 92 miles an hour. So we got, that's a stock swing, and then here's your high speed. Yeah. So how consistent <laughs> <laughs> those, those club speeds are. Yeah, that's the, the but look the what happened to the, the same. look what happened to the ball speed numbers. Yeah, just from not hitting it as solid, sufficiency numbers drops. So when you down. went from stock speed, you kind of gradually tried to increase your speed, your spin, and by doing that, took away ball speed, efficiency went down, 
spin obviously went way up. <laughs> Carrie and Total Distance clearly declined dramatically. Yeah. And we had the, basically a shank on this last one here. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well then, I mean, can you even go higher than 11,205? I, I don't know if I can get higher <laughs> than that. Um, I'm going to try and add a little more Because my speed. thought, I never thought, you know, because I, I was thinking about, you know, how I was going to manage this challenge. I didn't even think in my mind about a purposeful shank. I didn't. <laughs> uh, I thought maybe hit location to a degree going lower on the face and maybe trying to catch one a little thin as I'm, you know, cutting across it and whatnot. Yep. But I didn't even think about a purposeful shank. But I don't know if I could pull that off. I don't have the skill you do. Right. If I had been one really, really far around the trees, like I was really stuck, hey, you, ne you never know. Yeah, right? I suppose. <laughs> All right. Well, but. I, will, uh, I will try to beat that. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to do my last two swings. I'm going to leave it at three and, yeah. and give you a chance here think... to try and beat that. And you explain to me how you, what you're trying to do to yeah. uh, generate some... I was thinking, spin. yeah, I mean, I don't know if I... I was not thinking a purposeful shank, I'll tell you that. Okay, Drew, let's see uh, your stock golf swing here first. Just... I want to just get a general idea of what numbers we're starting as a, as a baseline. Oh, God. Might not, might not be able to keep that one. No, that's fine. It's all right. Even though I said all those things. So you didn't quite catch that one perfect. I mean, your efficiency was still pretty good. Just let the face yeah. a little open. Spin rate, high 5,000s. Pretty yeah. close to what I, we were seeing with, with mine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, your attempt. What, so you, I gave you a couple of hints on, yeah. on how, a way to maybe crack the high spin with a, with a yeah. 7 iron. What are you, uh, well, you going to try and do? And I know that uh, you know, hitting a, a fade increases spin. So right away, I know my setup and everything like that, you know, my feet alignment, my shoulder alignment, and my club face alignment, I'll have to be set up for a fade to generate more spin. And you had mentioned that left to right curve, that's also gonna be part of it. So, you know, that's the first thing. So I'm gonna kind of set up, hit, you know, a fade to kind of get that feeling um, and what that is. So, you know, open the, the feet up a little bit, open the shoulders up a little bit, but then keep the face at the target and then just kind of swing down that line. And then, you know, you should start to see that curve. Yeah. So you, same thing. We saw a little bit of a jump there on the spin rate. Pretty similar to what we saw with mine, actually. I think the first swing, I was about 67. Yeah. And you were 69. So you've got, you've got some work to do here. Yeah. So now, okay. So the next thing that you had done was kind of leaning back quite a bit to, you know, remove the de-lofting factor. Almost, you know, keep that loft up so this is where the swing might get a little bit interesting to look at but open feet open shoulders maybe open that face up a little more that's got a chance to spin more oh yeah, yeah. so i think this this is an interesting <laughs> time to talk about i see it's too many golfers trying to help the ball up in the air yeah they're they're trying to literally loft that ball up in the air by hanging back on mm -hmm. it as opposed to letting the loft on the club right. do, the, do, the, do its job. And, and this that's is a, a great example right there yeah. of what we see sometimes. Now this is a little exaggerated, yeah. but uh, beginner golfers especially, they th you know, think they've got to help the ball up in the yeah. air. Oh yeah. But you I mean, don't. That, that you weight in a normal right. swing, your weight should be, you know, very, very far forward when you're completed with the swing. Right. And you know, obviously there I was like this. <laughs> so yeah. that's, you got the ball uh, up in the air. So then the next piece, now you went to the to level of shanking it on purpose. I'm going to try that, but I don't think I have the game for that. I don't know if I do. <laughs> I don't think I have the precision to say, I'm going to hit it here <laughs> and do it. But I'm going to try it. Otherwise, the next piece, too, I would do is, like, you can get really wristy with it and just kind of, you know, swipe across like that. Yeah. Which well, could really generate some spin. But You got a couple of swings here. Let's see what you got. Yeah. I'll maybe save that shank for last, actually, because if I really get desperate and need to get more <laughs> spin, maybe I'll go for it. But let's get some more wrist action into this here. Okay, I chunked that one. It still had a lot of spin on it, but yeah, you got a little bit of ground on that swing. Yeah. Track might even pick up everything. Yeah. Let's, uh, all right. If I hit one solid, I'll get, I'm trying to get that 10,000 mark at least. Oh, that, that's cut a chance. Oh, <laughs> you got me. Wow. Wow, was that impressive. Yeah, I that's mean, just, that's, that was all wrist. And I just happened <laughs> to catch it like 
I mean, I'm swiping across the ball. Man. Yeah. I yeah. So I'll, I don't think I I can I can beat that. I think my <laughs> my shank was about as much spin as I could possibly generate on. Look at that! Look at that shot there. You got some great stopping power. Ninety-four yards going. Ninety-four yards. It's like a wedge. If you, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have a big obstacle in the way, just take out your seven iron and spin it eleven thousand three hundred fifty-three <laughs> RPM. Right. Okay. So you you won the high spin part. I did. I did not like my chances after you, you shanked one like okay, that. Okay. So but. now I want you to set the bar for low spin. Okay. So, so what, what we have to do, now we're talking probably a, a different 7-iron. We mm -hmm. said we could use any 7-iron in the store. Yeah. So is there a particular 7-iron in your mind that you... There you, is a couple. Um, and the reason being that the lofts are strong. And so I know, you know, one that comes to mind is like Sim 2 Max OS. Uh, because I know that loft, I believe, is 27 degrees. Or yeah. maybe even stronger than that. So that's one that comes to mind. And at that point, I'm, if they can get a lighter shaft in that, even better. But... Um, I would try to find baby, maybe like the, uh, a lower launching, if possible, shaft with that club head. That way it's going to launch low and you know, keep that spin down. Okay. Well, let's, let's go look on the wall and see what we can find. Okay, Drew, which irons did you choose? I've got the Maverick 7 iron here. Um, I, there was no Sim 2 Max OS on the wall. There's a bunch of Sim 2 Max. Um, on that wall, but I did find a Maverick. Now, Maverick also 27 degrees of loft. Uh, and I also, it's a 95 gram steel shaft here. So that should help also keep launch a little bit lower and hopefully spin a little bit lower than maybe if there was a graphite one. So that's what I've got here. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to go back for another, but we'll see. All right, now I also have the same idea as you, uh, loft. I chose the Epic Forged Star. So I've got you beat by one degree. The loft on this one is 26 okay. degrees. Okay. So I think I think this is probably the lowest loft seven iron that's on the. That's I've on never the heard wall. of 25. I know that right. 26 is that's yeah. the strongest I've the heard. The only of. other iron I can think of was Titus T400, but it wasn't on the wall. Mm -hmm. So this is this is what I've got. Let's see what you got. So to you know obviously the opposite of the spectrum for spinning low. You know, you're trying to come in not steep, you're trying to come in shallow, and you're trying to basically lean forward, right, and keep that ball low. The other way, you know, if you're launching higher weights back and you're trying to sky the thing. Right. So I'm kind of narrowing my stance. I don't know, maybe you will or will not do this, but then I'm also trying to just keep weight forward and also hit a draw too, because that'll spin less. So I, I like your thinking. Maybe back, back of the stance too. All right. All right. Good start there. Hit a few of these. This isn't, I know we wanted to say roughly 80 club speed, so maybe swing a little bit faster here. Ooh, I caught that one a little bit low on the face. It's all right. Mm. The loft helped you out there. That wouldn't be very good stopping power on the no. golf course. Now, it'd be great in the wind if you're playing a Lynx golf course. That is funny because 177 iron yards of the 7 iron is usually a decent number for me. Right. It's just getting there a different way. Yes. All right. I'm going to maybe try to hook this one a little bit more here. Oh, I gained some spin on that. I mean, these have been three very, very low spinning shots. I think they're, they're, they're not going very high. Shots. They're not going very high either. Right. All right. It's good. <laughs> that 195 yards. <laughs> that doesn't feel like I'm With swinging. With just a flick of the wrist. <laughs> I'm not swinging nearly fast enough to hit it that far. That's just. Yeah. All right, I got one more left. One more. I got one more. I think I'm in the 31 range right now. I'm gonna try to really work this one here. Oh, that might have a chance. Oh. Uh, good. Very, very consistent. You're kind of the low, like the 
mid to high three thousands yeah. on, on those five shots was your was your spin. Pretty good. I mean, on average, but 37, 31 was a, was your lowest. Forty one was your highest. So I see you're going for consistency. You're just I, I, to- I guess I was. I, yeah. I was. Yeah. No, that was. I'm. I can't believe a couple of those went 190 plus yards. <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it, to is, me. it is crazy, and I mean, this is why loft is your friend, people. This is why if you don't have enough speed, yeah, playing a strong lofted club is maybe yeah. Because if the, you're the if you're looking option. for distance, the easiest way to get that with an iron is, is making a stronger loft. I mean, yeah. I. I mean, look at I the, cannot the comprehend carry to that. total distance there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No stopping power, but if you're looking for pure distance, you know, I was swinging. I thought it was funny, 178.9, I think that's very close to what your uh, stock swing was, yeah. 181.5. <laughs> Just Look at the different difference play, in swing speed, though. I was 84.8 with the low spin and 91.7. Right, yeah. Crazy. Okay. So, loft is definitely one of the fastest ways that we can yep. uh, get the ball to spin less. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Thomas, I think what was the, uh, the mark was 31-something to beat? 31.02. Uh, okay. All right, I like that challenge. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna try and actually deal off the clubs. I'm gonna put it back in my stance. Yeah. So I'm gonna really try and feel like I can get that dynamic loft very, very low mm-hmm. impact. I definitely don't want to take too much ground, so I actually want to feel like my attacking was not steep on it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to launch this thing as low as I possibly can and keep that spin rate down. Mm-hmm. Oh my word. <laughs> what a shot. That thing didn't even get in the air. I, I think I need to get the ball in the air a little That's bit higher. Yeah. That is a beautiful, like, rolling punch shot. <laughs> We've lost the golf ball. Behind the screen. Oh, oh the spin rate is under there. You got the. You, you beat the spin rate. I think we broke track, man. <laughs> okay, so that was probably too extreme. Um, that's. I'm gonna try and increase the loft just a little bit and see what happens to the to the rollout. I mean, because that's that is some low spin. That's a seven iron. You're swinging at 80 miles an hour, basically. One four seven smash full speed. <laughs> You're hitting it good. Yeah, but twenty nine eighty one spin. That is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's try and get this thing to stay in the air a little bit more. Ooh, that was hit. Jeez, that's some speed. You hit that two hundred and six yards. <laughs> With a 7.1 launch angle. That's, <laughs> that's why loft is important because, yeah, you, you need to launch the ball a lot higher yeah. so the ball can uh, <laughs> carry a little bit further. I mean, even still, that went pretty far it considering um, how low that launch. Yeah, 7.1 launch. That's... Ooh, that could be really good. Ooh. All right, you got one I more, Thomas. Get one really Let's see low. it. Ooh, that hit pretty low on that screen. Oh, look at that ball flight. I actually use this shot a lot on the golf course. If I'm in trees, yeah, I'll stand pretty close to the ball, and I'll try and hit that thing really, really low to keep it under, but also mm-hmm. hit it pretty straight and chase out. Yeah, because I mean, you chase that one out 182 yards. Okay, um, 138 going 182. So here are the shots. You got the winner for the low spin at 2981. And I, that, I mean, it, it just the, the mere idea of a 7 iron spinning under 3,000 still swinging at 80 miles an hour, not with some chunk or anything like that, that's, that's crazy to me. Uh, but it's, it shows how manipulating the club, manipulating your swing, and also the club type that you have can make such a big difference. Because we went from 2981 here to 11,353 in spin. And all of the clubs we hit were seven irons. It's just, you can change things up that much. Right, so I mean, it's a combination of getting the right club in your hands, yeah. but also having a efficient swing path and yes. face angle and delivery as well. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a reason you know, why we, we fit every single golfer differently. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got a different golf swing. And yeah. we're looking at all these, these numbers. And now these are extreme numbers, and we're yeah. exaggerating them to probably extremes that we probably don't need to. <laughs> right. But it was a fun challenge. It was, uh, yeah. it was fun to see how low we could spin the ball with a 7-iron, yeah. how high we could spin the ball with a 7-iron. Uh, and I hope it was, yeah. you know, some of the things that we were kind of, as we were talking through both sides of the equation, could help some golfers that maybe you're struggling with one end of the spectrum here. If they need more spin, maybe they want to, you know, uh, add a couple of the elements that we talked about with increasing spin, whether it's opening that stance, coming in more steep, whatever the case might be, or vice versa, maybe, um, you know, they need decreased spin. And then there's a couple of things that we mentioned, um, and it clearly shows that it can decrease that spin. Uh, maybe not to the extreme that we did, but certainly there's some pointers there I think that maybe golfers can take away. Because um, managing spin, as we saw here, can be huge in, in controlling the golf shot, hitting accurate golf shots, and ultimately scoring lower. Yeah, I think to summarize this, this just shows why loft is your friend. Yeah. Loft is important, whether that be the stated loft on the golf club that you're getting fit into or that you're playing, or the dynamic loft, the way that you deliver the golf club at, yeah. at impact. Um, both those two numbers influence so many variables, mm -hmm. the launch and the spin. And if that dynamic loft is very, very high, it's going to spin a lot mm -hmm. more. If that dynamic loft is very, very low, it's going to spin very low. 